The A-League is barreling towards a pretty exciting conclusion. Melbourne City just took home their second straight premiership, and the finals are bringing together rivals. Meanwhile, European super club FC Barcelona is headed to Australia, and Manchester United legend Dwight York is meant to prepare the A-League All-Stars to face them. Let's look at everything new in the world of Aussie football. First up, Melbourne City makes history. It was a tough season, but Melbourne City has beaten all the odds and seized the Australian A-League premiership for the second season in a row. Winning in a match versus the Wellington Phoenix, City was able to snatch a 2-1 victory and go home as the premiers. Their achievement of back-to-back -back premierships is, of course, the cherry on top of the fact that City will be going to the final playoffs. Melbourne City is now the second team in A-League history to gain consecutive premierships. The only other team to do so is Sydney FC, one of the most accomplished teams in the league, who pulled it off in the 2016, 2017, and 2017, 2018 seasons. So that certainly raises the bar for City. But another opportunity to make history is before them. As the reigning A-League champs, they're the favorites for winning back-to-back -back championships. That's never been done before and would cement City's place in the A-League history. Patrick Kisnorbo, the head coach, has talked to the media about some of the challenges the team had to overcome to get to the top. Melbourne City had times when nine players were out of action and they faced international and domestic games. Sometimes they had three games scheduled per week and some of those were on consecutive days. Talking about these difficulties, he said that the premiership and the shot at the championship were all worth the hard times his team faced this season and showed their adversity and strength. Next, Wellington struggles, but there's hope. The hopes of victory for fans cheering for the Phoenix were shattered early on when Sam Sutton scored an own goal three minutes into the match. This was followed up 10 minutes in by Jamie McLaren adding to the tally for City, netting his 15th goal of the tournament and securing his third straight golden boot. Wellington tried to hold the game down from there, and Ben Wayne scored one for the team at 54 minutes, but they ultimately failed to stop City from clinching the silver. Despite the challenges that City faced throughout the season, they turned in a strong and relentless performance in this game. The Phoenix got little breathing room as Sutton was on their case from the very first minute. Credit to Oliver Sale for letting only one goal in. There were some factors that prevented the Phoenix from achieving their best. Stars like David Ball and Gail Sandoval couldn't even make the bench, and Rene Piscopo started from the bench. These moves indicated that Wellington intended to save their best players for the finals. However, it wasn't all bad news for the team. Clayton Lewis returned after six weeks on the sideline and was able to play the entire second half. Together with Piscopo, the two regained momentum for the team in the second half, and their contributions were key in Wayne scoring the Phoenix's only goal of the match. Riley Bedois and Jackson Manuel got their first starts in the starting lineup, and star striker Gary Hooper was back in the starting 11 as well. It wasn't quite enough to get Wellington Phoenix a win, unfortunately. Wellington coach Yufuk Tale discussed the game and explained that he was happy with the second half, though less so with the first. He was glad to have a great half of the match with City, referring to it as pretty close to finals football. That being said, this was hardly a critical match for the Wellington Phoenix, as their place in the finals was already secure. The team still finished sixth in the league, and while some of their best players set this game out, we're positive that the Phoenix will rise in the finals. And now, let the final countdown begin. All eyes are on the six teams that finished at the top of the regular A-League season. We've already looked at City, Victory, and Phoenix, but they'll also be joined in the finals by Western United, Adelaide United, and the Central Coast Mariners. City and Victory ended the regular season in the top two spots of the table, and the teams are on fire. We wouldn't be too surprised to see them dominate the finals, and Melbourne will be the place to be if a derby was to take place. Maybe in the final. Wouldn't that be something? That's not to count out the other teams, as they've been fighting strong too. There's no reason to assume that this will just be Melbourne's game. The finals will surely be as exciting as the rest of the season, if not more. Next, in other related news, the Dolan Warren Awards set for 26th of May. The dust hasn't quite settled yet on the A-League, but the award season is set to come during the interlude. On the 26th of May, players will receive the A-League's highest honors at the Dolan Warren Awards ceremony, which will be held at the Carriage Works in Sydney. The awards are named for Aussies men's and women's legends, Johnny Warren and Julie Dolan, who have had storied careers in football and did a lot to promote the domestic Australian football in the early days. With awards comes speculation. Who could go home with the Johnny Dolan Award for the best male player? How about the other awards on the Dolan Warren slate? Let us know your picks in the comment section below. COVID-19 and other plagues bringing down the 2021-2022 season. Robbie Slater, analyst and commentator, is very unhappy with how this season panned out. He aired his grievances to Big Sports Breakfast about how the season suffered for factors in and out of the A-League's control. Among the factors that have negatively impacted the game this season is its new administration under the Australian Professional Leagues. The APL was trying out some new ideas for how to run the games and broadcasting, but all their plans were scuppered by the coronavirus. The pandemic led to games being postponed to the middle of the week
week so the league could stay somewhat on schedule. The instability of the A-League schedule made it hard for them to build audience momentum and crowds were small throughout the season. On top of that, free-to-air ratings were down on Network 10 and Paramount Plus's streaming shows haven't been well received. Slater claims to have spoken to many current coaches and players who agree with him on the misled direction of the league. While they acknowledge that not all of the problems this season can be blamed on the APL, they're not convinced that the APL's going to take any meaningful steps to address this season's issues. The outlook on the future of the league is gloomy, and they're worried about their own careers and futures. El Clasico comes to Australia. A-League and La Liga fans alike will want to mark their calendars on the 25th of May as the legendary FC Barcelona is set to tour down under. They'll be looking to use this time as the perfect opportunity to end the season on a high. The game's set to be played at the Acor Stadium in Sydney. Acor is usually home for all-star A-League games. It has a capacity of 83,500 and it will be sold out for sure. The government of New South Wales is definitely hoping that this match draws a big and possibly international crowd. It's Australia's biggest sporting event since COVID-19 forced the country to close off tourism two years ago. And while it's open again, the numbers have been down. And NSW is also hoping that Barcelona will be able to open the world's eyes to domestic Australian football. The club is one of the most heavily followed in the world on social media, boasting 396 million followers across the most popular social networks. Football fans must have a burning question in mind. Who are the players facing off against each other? It's an interesting situation, especially on Barca's end. Their game in Acor will come less than 48 hours after their last La Liga match, and three of their best are sidelined with injuries. That includes team captain Gerard Pique. As for the A-League, their side isn't confirmed either. Since it comes days before the A-League Grand Final, we can only assume that no one from those two teams will be showing up. Though there are questions left to be answered about this fixture, one thing is for certain. This will be one of the biggest things to happen in Australian football this year. Remember the date. It's 25th of May. Dwight York comes to Australia. As we mentioned before, Dwight York will be coaching the A-League All-Stars in their quest to slay FC Barcelona. But that won't be all for York's coaching stint. He is set to assume full coaching duties for MacArthur FC with a two-year deal set in stone. The young club was previously coached by Ante Milicic, who was wrapping up his coaching career after the 2021-2022 season to return to Croatia for family reasons. York has certainly earned his stripes with his playing career at Man United, and MacArthur FC is a new team with a lot to prove. It's a great place for any player or coach to make their mark. We will be watching York's coaching career with great interest. That'll do it for today. Don't forget to share your predictions for the Dolan Warren Awards, as well as who you think will take home the cup and how you feel about this season. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.